Hi everyone, today we'll be, we will be exploring sequences and series which show up quite often on the Amy. For a brief introduction, my name is Arya Korovar and I am a staff member at ALP. I am a freshman in upstate New York, and outside of mathematics I play the bassoon and piano for multiple ensembles, and in, di in addition I follow Ajax and European soccer in general like quite often regularly. And if you ever have the need to contact me, my AOPS is IX31 and my Discord is IX315137 as shown. Today we'll be taking a look at sequences and series, a very important topic that shows up quite often on the Amy. This video will be broken up into three major areas. We will begin by looking at, an arithmetic, at arithmetic sequences, which will be followed by exploring geometric sequences. After that, we will look at four past Amy problems that deal with sequences and series. Let's get into it. We begin by defining an arithmetic sequence as a sequence in which the difference between any two numbers is the same value. This value is called the common difference, which can be any number. For example, the three sequences listed here are all arithmetic sequences with common differences of 1, negative 1, and 5 respectively. An important thing to note is that the common difference remains constant between all adjacent terms. Transitioning into some formulas that will help us with solving arithmetic sequences and Amy problems, we begin with the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, which is shown here. The nth term is n minus 1, the number of terms, times d, plus the first term. d is the common difference. Uh, since each of, To prove this, we simply write the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence in two ways, as shown. Since each of the terms except for the first term of the left-hand side contain a d, which is the common difference, we can rewrite this equation by grouping all of the d's together like this. Finally, subtracting the a1 plus a2 plus all the way up to a, um, the second to last term, which is a sub n minus 1, gives our desired result of a of n, the nth term, equals n minus 1 times d plus the first term. This formula will be very helpful if we ever need to calculate the nth value of an arithmetic sequence that we already know the common difference and a term for. Our next theorem deals with the amount of terms of a finite arithmetic sequence and is very important to know when solving contest problems involving these such sequences. To prove this, all we can do is rearrange the previous formula as shown. The final formula that we, will go, that we will go over for arithmetic sequences finds the sum of any finite arithmetic sequence. To prove this, we write out twice the sum of an arithmetic sequence, pairing each term with its opposite counterpart, as shown. For example, the first term is with the um, last term, the second term is with the second to last term, and so on, all the way until the last term is paired with the first term. Note that each of the terms in pairs is the same as the sum of the first and last term of the sequence. Using this, we rewrite our equation as shown. Finally, dividing by 2 gets us our desired result. Note that we can use this equation to find a formula for the first n positive integers by replacing the first term a, a sub, sub 1 with 1 and a sub n with 1, n. And this is the sum of the first n positive integers. Moving on, let's move on to geometric sequences. For our definition, we defined a geometric sequence as a sequence in which each term can be written as the product of the previous term in a constant value, which is often referred to as the common ratio. For example, the three sequences shown here have common ratios of 2, 1 half, and 3 respectively. Note that similarly to arithmetic sequences, the common ratio stays constant between each pair of adjacent terms. Our first formula de dealing with arithmetic with ge geometric sequences sorry, helps us find the nth term, and we will prove this very similarly to how we proved the formula for, to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. We begin by writing out the product of the terms in the geometric sequence as two ways set equal to each other as shown. We then proceed to group up all the terms on the right-hand side except for the eight, first term, the first, time, the first term a of sub 1. So that we can have only one occurrence of the common ratio of our, in our equation. Finally, dividing by both sides by a sub 1 times a sub 2 times all the way up to a sub n minus 1, we get our desired result. We will now proceed to find the sum of a finite geometric sequence as shown. 
To prove this, we write out the sum of a geometric sequence with each term written out as a product of the first term and a power of the common ratio. Next, we multiply this equation by the common, common ratio denoted as r. The important step here is to subtract the second equation from the first. Note that the first term multiplied by r in, in here in this um, subtraction, note that the first term multiplied by r to the power of n is the same, ta same as the last term multiplied by r because the last term is a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Finally, factoring 1 minus r out of the left-hand side gets us our desired result. Our final formula will deal with the sum of an infinite geometric sequence with a common ratio that has an absolute value of less than 1. Note that in such a sequence, each term gets closer to 0, meaning that the sequence will converge, meaning that the sum of its terms will get closer to a certain number. In a geometric sequence that has a common ratio with an absolute value greater than or equal to 1, the sum will diverge, meaning that it will become infinitely small or infinitely large because each term of the sequence becomes farther and farther away from 0. The formula shown here deals with geometric sequences with the sum that reaches a definite point, otherwise known as a converging sequence. The proof for this is quite similar to the proof we just completed finding the sum of a finite geometric sequence. We begin by writing out the sum of the sequences in terms of the first term and a power of the common ratio, and then multiply that by that common ratio for our second equation. Subtracting the second equation from the first yields only one term, which is the first term of the sequence. Finally, dividing both sides of this equation by 1 minus r yields the desired result. Now that we have gone over some of the most useful formulas regarding arithmetic and geometric sequences, Let's go through four past Amy problems to practice these new skills. We begin by solving problem three from the 2011 Amy 2. The problem reads, the degree measures of the angles in a convex 18-sided polygon form an increasing arithmetic sequence with integer values. Find the degree measure of the smallest angle. Our first step is to find the average of each angle, which is 160. Since there is an even amount of angles, none of the angles will have a degree measure of 160. Therefore, we let the common difference of the sequence be 2D. Therefore, we can write the 18 angles in order from least to greatest as shown right here. Since each of these angles measures must be integers, D must also be a positive integer. We also know that each degree measure must be less than 180 since the polygon is convex. Therefore, D must equal 1. Finishing up the problem, the smallest angle is equal to 160 minus 17 times 1, which equals 143. On to our next problem, we will be solving fi problem 5 from the same Amy competition, Amy 2011, Amy pro um, 2. The sum, in this problem, the sum of the first 2011 terms of a geometric sequence is 200, the sum of the first 4022 terms is 380, and we are asked to find the sum of the first 6,033 terms. For the sake of notation, let's um, let s of n denote the sum of the first n terms of this geometric sequence. So for example, we have s of 2011 equals um, 200, and s of 4,022 equals 380. We then proceed to write s of n as the sum of s of 2011 and r to the power 2011 times s of 2011, as shown. Note that this is true because the 2012th term is the same as the first term times r to the power 2011 and so forth to the 4022nd term being the 2011th term times r to the power 2011. Inputting our values of s of 2011 and s of 4022 can now help us solve for r to the power 2011, which comes out to be 9 tenths. Now, we can focus on finding the sum of the first 6,033 terms with our newly found value of r to the power of 2011, which is 9 tenths. Similarly to how we wrote the sum of s of 4,022, we write the sum of the first 6,033 terms as shown. Since we know the values of s of 2011 and r of 2011, we pu plug them into our equation 
to achieve a final answer of 542. Moving on, we have problem six now to solve from the 1988 Amy. Here we have a five by five square and it is possible to place positive integers such that each row and column are arithmetic sequences. And we have to find the positive integer that is in the square with the asterisk, asterisk as shown. We, be, we begin by introducing two variables to our grid. Since the square in the bottom left is zero, we create two sequences along the bottom and leftmost column with common differences of A and B, respectively. Since we have two terms in some of the rows and columns, we can start to create some more sequences in terms of A and B. We notice that the middle column going through the bottom from the bottom up has a common difference of 103 minus 2A, so we continue it through two more squares, as shown. In addition, the second row from the top, going from left to right, has a common difference of 74 minus 3b, and we similarly continue the sequence for two more squares. Note that we now have a square in which two expressions are equal. This is really important. If we can find one more of these such squares, then we have a system of equations which will help us find the values of a and b. Notice that the rightmost column has two terms of 186 and 4a, with a space between them. This space is simply the average of the two, which is 93 plus 2a. We can apply the same thinking to the space between 103 and 93 plus 2a, which has with an average of 98 plus a. Now we have two values of the column, one from the right, that both have an a in it. Therefore, this column has a common difference going from the bottom up of 98 minus 2a. Completing this column results in the table as shown. Note that this column both gave us another square with two equal expressions, and it gave us a value of the square with an asterisk in terms of a, of 392 minus 5a. We then use the two squares with two expressions to create a system of equations in terms of a and b, as shown. Solving the system, we obtain a equals 50 and b equals 13. The final step is to calculate the square with the asterisk, which is just 392 minus 5 times 50, which is a, which equals our final answer of 142. On to our final problem, we have problem 11 from the 2002 Amy 2. In the problem, we have two different infinite geometric sequences, each with a total sum of one, and that have the same second term. The third term of one of the sequences is one eighth, and we have to find the common second term. Let's begin by introducing a variable a for the common second term of both sequences. Shifting our focus to the sequence with the third term of one eighth, we see that the common ratio is one over eight over a, one over eight a. Therefore, the first term of the sequence is a times eight a, which is equivalent to eight a squared. So these are the first three terms of that sequence. The next step of this problem is to use the fact that each of the geometric sequences has a sum of one. Going back to our useful formulas that we covered earlier in this video, we know that the sum of a converging geometric sequence is the first term divided by one minus the common ratio, denoted as r here. Since we already found the first term in the common ratio, we can create an equation for the sum in terms of a as shown. Getting rid of denominators and bringing all of the equations to one side of the equation um, yields the cubic 64 times a cubed minus a a minus one equals zero. Noticing that a equals one fourth is a solution to this equation, we divide the original cubic by four a minus one, leading to the quadratic 16 a squared plus four a minus one. Using the quadratic formula, we find that this quadratic has solutions of negative one plus or minus square root of five all divided by eight, which are two of the solutions of the original cubic alongside one fourth. The only solution that fits the given form of square root m minus n m square root m minus n all over p 
for positive integers m minus m n and p is the second solution as shown. Therefore, the final answer is 500 plus 10 plus 8, which equals 518. That concludes this video on sequences and series. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on Discord or AOPS, or you can ask on ALP's Discord server. Make sure to check out our website site at alpmathprogram.rapl.co, where you can find handouts and recordings from past classes. Also, make sure to join our Discord and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we will be posting more videos going over many other useful topics that show up on the Amy. Thank you.